G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Well, hi folks. Well, we are in my studio today and uh, we're going to be doing a lesson with uh, some of the techniques I've learned over the years and getting something pretty close to, to this. I mean, these major works that I do are fairly complex, but I'm going to show you little bits and pieces of some of the methodology that goes into creating a piece like this. This one, uh, probably another couple of weeks to finish it, but, uh, but it's going to be great anyway. But we're, we're actually um, very thankful and grateful to a gentleman in New Zealand who I actually met through Paul Coney, who was one of our great artists from New Zealand, a gentleman called Daniel King. And Daniel actually owns a company called About Health, and he produces supplements in New Zealand and sells those literally all over the world these days, but he makes some fantastic products. And then Daniel is a, an avid art collector as well, so there was a bit of a synergy. So Daniel actually approached me and said, could he sponsor a show? And I said, well, absolutely, you, you certainly can. And I have been using his products now for about 12 months, and they are absolutely fantastic. I use this Lester's oil as well, which is this guy right here. And it's got, it's an antioxidant, it's got uh, omega-3 in it, about three times more than you would normally have in others as well. And then I also use another one called Res V Ultimate, which is just fantastic. It's got turmeric and grapeseed in it. I'm 61 years of age now, so, you know, things are, things are getting a little tough these days, but it really helps out my joints. And I find in the afternoons I don't, I used to fall asleep quite a lot, but I just don't seem to do that these days by taking Daniel's supplement. So it's a company called All About Health. It's allabouthealth.co.nz and you can uh, go in and have a look at what they do. I thoroughly recommend their products. And as well, thank you, Daniel, so much for supporting Colour in Your Life and what we do. And also, you know, buying the works of, of many, many of the artists. Um, Daniel's an avid art collector and uh, we really thank him for what he's done. So. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to my desk over here and we're going to start the process of putting this one particular piece together. I've got a few of them organised in bits and pieces. And um, from there, I've got cutouts, uh, I've got templates, there's a whole bunch of things I'm going to show you. As I said, very similar to putting something like this together. These are very complex pieces to do. You don't paint something like this in a week. I mean, there's probably a good five to six weeks work in a piece like this. They are really quite complex. But I'm going to go over to the desk and we're going to start the show. Uh, thank you once again, Daniel, for these amazing products. And uh, let's, let's get a beginning. Okay, guys. Well, this is where we're actually going to be heading to today in the, in the finished process. So as you can see, it, it could be a lot more complex with this, but this is just something that I wanted to do to illustrate to you how you can go about doing these guys. And what I've done, we're actually putting this onto board um, for various reasons. I mean, if they're quite large, these particular pieces, and you go to put a two-pack solution on them at the end, they can actually sag in the middle. So you've got to be fairly careful with, the, with what you do as far as the surface that you work on to begin with. And then I've actually just found this picture. I'm always looking on the net for different things. I do take a lot of my own photos as well. But I just sort of thought this looked fabulous and it suited the, the whole process of what I wanted to do with the gold leaf and the cutouts as well. So what I've done is I actually carboned this onto obviously this just this piece here. As you can see there's this section at the side there as well, just here as well that I'm going to gold leaf also, um, varying different things that we can use to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with these inks. I'm using Schmincke inks. They're pretty cool. Uh, they're very bright. I mean, I use lots of different types of, of inks and I use lots of different types of watercolour, gouache and oils. And what I'm going to do first off is I'm just going to drop some yellow. So just to mimic what we've got going on here. In the top section there, not so much on the face. A little bit down here, a little bit in here, a little bit more at the top. And then we get the red, which is mostly down the bottom. And we come around here like so. I've basically used that red there 
and then there's a bit more there, a bit more there. And all I'm doing is just dropping the color down or the ink down. And literally that's all I've done is I've just dropped the color down. And then what I'm gonna do now, and as you can see, the colors just start to come out everywhere. This really comes out to be quite fantastic and tasmical. And I can actually just squeeze those corners into the color in the corner where I want it to go. I'm not completely losing her, but I'm just pushing, pushing the colors down. There we go. And actually what I'll do is I'll use the doily on this section here once this paint dries. And that'll give you an idea of where we're going with that. But that's leading up to getting to here. We've got another one in the middle that I'll be working on pretty predominantly. And then, um, yeah, we go from there. So we'll just dry this one off and then we'll come back and we'll do the, with the doily on the side here. Okay guys, well this is dried off and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the masking tape. I've already drawn a line all the way down the edge here like so. I'm just going to cut it off and I just want to create this edge here. And what I've got here is some modelling compound. I'm going to put the modelling, uh, get the doily, put the doily up to there like so. And then I might just bring that over here. And then what I'm going to do is get the modelling compound out. Let's turn this around a little bit. And then just literally all the way. And these different doilies can come in really handy because you can get all different shapes and sizes and templates and this is just paper as well. But, and this is just for a feature on the edge of the picture but you can do it just about anywhere if you wanted to. This is a technique that I probably would have picked up from Dee Gillette many years ago. Dee's a fantastic artist, she was up in Brisbane and I just thought that's actually quite fascinating with the way she was doing it. So there's that one there, I just peel that one off like so and as you can see you can see the patterns along the side there so all I do is just turn it around or actually I'll just do this, just tear it down the middle like so, so we don't we don't get any of that other wet stuff on there. And I just bring it up to the edge again. And away we go. Like so. Over the years, my style has changed quite dramatically, I suppose. When you travel the world and you film hundreds of artists in different countries, you, you're going to learn some things. But, you know, I just love to experiment with different ideas as well. I mean, art just shouldn't be grabbing some paint and just putting it down. I mean, there should be an expression of just about everything that you can put into it to make it what you want. But as you can see, uh, I've actually, this has been put down. I just peeled the, the doily off and now you've got the patterns in there as well. I can actually, I'll leave this tape on and then what I'll do is I'll get to the stage where I can actually uh, gold leaf it uh, to this section here. Now there is another part of this as well, and I'll just put that one over there. And this is these templates that I've actually cut out, which are these ones here. And I actually went over them with, uh, you can just see that there's a little bit of purple on the back there. This is just like purple cardboard. And I went over uh, this with a pattern. I actually put a pattern on there myself. So what I'm going to show you as well, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can just gold leaf it or basically I can squeeze the colour out and I can get a mound building and basically make varying patterns on this because it's actually the, the top section of the ladies, uh, whatever it is. And in the end, we end up with a situation like this where it's a bit the opposite of this, but there's a gold leaf there. The gold leaf will go on top of this one once it's dry. All right, well, I think I've shown you gold leafing in some of the other shows that I've done, but I just love the effect. And it's just not with gold leaf. You can use all sorts of different colored leaves to get these, these particular um, ideas coming. Uh, we're heading towards this. I've got another piece, and now we're gonna start to put some paint down. And I'm gonna mix a palette that'll basically take me to this section here. Uh, I'll do a little bit on the second one and then to finish it off we're going to come back to this one and we're going to put a two-pack solution across this but I'll just show you these bits and pieces 
that, uh, that I put together as we go along. So we'll move on to the second one now. Okay, well, we'll move on to the second piece, but what I'd like to show you, and I would normally wait till this would dry a couple of days, but obviously because we're doing it for demonstration purposes today, I'm actually going to glue this first piece here that I've done. And basically all I do is squeeze the contact cement out, squeeze it out right up to the edges. And this is almost sort of like craft and painting at the same time, really. So what I do now with this is I I'm just going to put it across here. I've actually got a marker just there where it's going to go. And I'll just raise that up a little bit to there. And then basically just tap it down. Particularly with this stuff here, you can sort of pull it up and push it down. But what I do is I just continuously go around and just press it down and eventually seals it all. As long as I've got all the edges right on it there. But what we're going to do is we're going to put some paint down as well. As I said, this is sort of a long way to, to put these together. You, you know, watercolours take two hours. Some of my big originals can take months to put together, so you've got to plan them properly for a start. We have a very limited palette here. If you look, I've got some ultramarine, got some alizarin crimson, uh, some cad yellow, some violet, some white, and some Payne's grey. So, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it up, as they say, and I'm just going to break down some colours. A little bit of white with the violet. The, the geisha girls are sort of quite pale. Break that down again, we're not going to need huge amounts of it. A bit more white. So I suppose over the years, with filming hundreds of people in different countries, I have learned a little bit about different styles. You know what, nobody's ever that good that they cannot learn from somebody else. And uh, we really have walked into the studios of some of the best masters on the planet. The idea has continued to grow and we're in, I think, nearly 50 countries now. And um, we film in seven, more coming up, of course, and just some major organisations coming on board to be part of what we're doing. So. Uh, we're thrilled and just happy that, uh, that Colour in Your Life has been crossing the globe now for nearly 10 years and uh, I think changed the lives of many millions of people. Basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put some colours down. So literally all I'm doing is just mapping these in. When I first started my uh, career I sort of felt I Went to college for a little while, but I sort of thought, well, if I'm going to learn anything, I'm going to learn from the guys that really know what they're doing. So I was a huge fan of Raymond Ching's. He was just incredibly dedicated and he was persistent in what he did, but just, just a true artisan by any means. And, uh, you know, his paintings are just brilliant. I mean, the man's a freak of nature. Yeah, I mean, he just painted and that's what he did. And that's what you have to do. You don't become a great tennis player by watching somebody else play tennis. It's the same with art. And learning as well, I think that's the key to a lot of this, is it's that you have to learn. If you're not learning uh, continuously, which is what Colour in Your Life is all about, it's about going into those studios of those amazing people and, and learning all the time. But as you can see, I'm just sort of mapping in different areas. If I wanted to blend that a little bit more as well, is I get a very dry brush. And as you can see, it's got a fairly fluffy end on it that's been done pretty well on purpose too. And as you can see, it starts to slowly but surely just blend into each other. You just gotta be so light with it. I mean, after 37 years and then sort of coming to where I am now, um, where I began was mostly with wildlife because I used to breed parrots. And I actually did, I'm not sure if you're aware, but I uh, illustrated the Atlas of Parrots. You know, I've always had this great love of, of animals but I've tried to put them into part and parcel of the work that I've been doing over the years as well and I think unless you're uh, part of that journey and your work's changing and evolving you just begin to stagnate so it's just so important to to learn um, particularly from other artists I mean as much as you possibly can whether you do workshops or you watch colour in your life or you go to uh, plein air conventions like Eric Rhodes plein air convention in America, which is just amazing. It's important to do that. Okay, I'm going to get to the stage here. I'm going to need the old mail stick. It's just a great way to 
steady your hand. Yeah, and uh, once again, I really wanted to thank um, Daniel King from About Health in New Zealand. He makes some absolutely magnificent supplements. Really has helped me out a great deal. I, I have to be honest with you. It's, you know, I've got more energy and my joints are nowhere near as sore as they used to be. And, um, and you can go and see his supplements at abouthealth.co.nz. Go in there and say hi to them and just have a look at what they've got. Another thing that I do as well is I use these little bottles. They've got gold, gold paint in there and these tiny little um, silver tips that barely let the paint come out. They're really cool and I actually draw with them. And I just put some slight pressure on them like so. The paint comes out. This is acrylic paint inside. And it's just for effect. It really is. It just It's just very cool when you see this three-dimensional paint. And I've seen some absolutely spectacular paintings being created around techniques like this as well. Uh, what we might do is we might go on to the, the last piece and we're going to do the two-pack, the acrylic two-pack, and I'll show you how to seal all of that off and then pour the two-pack over. This is, this is a thing, if you don't get it right, you will destroy the picture. There's no two ways about it, but uh, we seem to have had some success over the years doing it, so let's go and have a look at the next one. Okay, well we've moved on to the last piece, as you can obviously see, and what I'm doing with this is I am just taping around the edges. Lucky it's bored. You can still do this with canvas, but... And I'm literally just building an edge and then, and then sealing it off. I mean, generally when you're using um, resins, acrylic resins, uh, people tend to let it flow over the side, but I'm actually going to seal it off so that it's it's boxed in. And I can actually just peel this off later on. But as you can see, we've built a little wall around it, ready to go. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take part A and part B of my resins, pour it in. all the way up to that level there. It's got to be absolutely exact. If you don't get this stuff right, it just will not go off at all. And I pour that one in, like so. Okay, now we're just going to pour the next one. Just a bit over there, that's it, right there. Tad more. Lid on again. Get some spectacular effects with this. And we can pour that one into there as well, like so. So I've got to stir this for three minutes. It goes creamy and then it will go clear, but you, you have to mix it for three minutes. So away we go. And over the years, we've actually had other artists use uh, art resins and acrylic resins. Um, it's just really fascinating stuff. And um, it's just become part of my repertoire as well. Just the effects you get of it are just really quite cool. Once again, not for the really traditional artist by any means. But for those that wish to experiment with the medium of art, this is a great way to go. Okay, that's about it. And then what I'm going to do, because this one's, remember, held in, the edges are holding in the resin, whereas a lot of the guys will do a free pour and let it fall over the edge. What well, it does build up a beautiful edge, I must admit, but I wanted to hold mine in place. So, what we do, slowly go across the whole thing, back and forth. Always remember, of course, you've got to make sure these things are, the paint is dry, it's very dry. Because if it's not, you'll be in trouble. Once again, scoop out the rest of it in there. Okay. And then what I do, so I'm actually seeing that I can move this backwards and forwards, just watching the edges, 
want to cover the whole lot but not let it fall over the top. And just squeeze it into these areas in here so it gets right under, underneath. And you just have to watch the levels. You know, hopefully it's even or as even as you can get it. Off with the gloves. And we've got bubbles everywhere. How do we get rid of the bubbles? We have a heat gun. Now I just want to make sure that that's pretty level and even. It might just come up just a tad on this side so I can just put it up there like so. That's better. Now I get the heat gun. This one's just a Makita. And then we get rid of all the bubbles. Wait till it heats right up. Particularly around areas like this because the the resin's going to have to go underneath. And it'll it'll cause bubbles coming up around if those uh, templates aren't stuck down properly and that should do it and uh, as you can see these edges have held up quite nicely and I'll just tear off once you've finished the whole process and uh, I'm just going to lift that up just a tad more under that edge there and that way it'll just flow back just a little bit and there you go you can actually see the surface on there it's just quite quite magnificent it really is and then all these little beads and baubles have been st st stuck in there now. They're in there for good. Just so I can just see some more bubbles. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, actually it is, Colour in Your Life is my show of course, but I haven't been on for a number of years, but it's been great to get back and continue our travels and uh, see all these amazing people. I mean, traveling around the world and spending time with these amazing people and uh, traveling with Sophia who is uh, my right hand girl, my right hand man, she's a fantastic woman, uh, you know, colour in your life wouldn't exist without Sophia so she's a pretty amazing human being. And also once again to thank um, Daniel King for stepping up to the plate and then helping, helping us out and being part and parcel of what colour in your life is and it's about education, it's about art, it's about beauty, travel and adventure. Uh, we're always looking for people to support us, um, you know, it's an expensive thing to put an idea like this together and then travel the globe, but once again, thank you so much to Dan Daniel King and also About Health in New Zealand, which is abouthealth.co.nz, so go and have a look at what he does, it's pretty amazing and I feel fantastic for taking the stuff as well. And if you want to see what I do, of course, you can come in into grahamstevensonart.com and then have a look at, uh, have a look at my work. But uh, I'm going to let this dry and we'll take some photos of it later on. Um, thanks once again, guys. And if you want to come and see us, colonylife.com.au, of course. Visit our Facebook page, come into YouTube, and we've got tons of people signing. It's really fantastic. Um, and until I see you again, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life. And thank you so much for coming into my studio. I'll see you guys later. Bye now.